October 22nd, 2023. But in all things, and before we come, I want to say condolences to the family, the friends, and loved ones of Mr. Nicole on behalf of the St. Mary's Catholic Parish Board. You are in your prayers, and God is going to take you through this time. But in all things we do, it is important to have God in our midst. And beginning, we're going to have our praise and worship. So I'll ask each and every one of you to please stand.
lyrics and songs. It says a country where no twilight shadows deeper. An ending day where night will never be. Our brother, he, he has passed on before us. He moved on to the Netherlands. However, he has moved on from a, a world of pain, a world of sorrow, where he is going now, only sunshine, laughter, joy. Family, though he's gone, remember the good memories, not the bad ones. Remember the laughter you guys shared, because Barry was very funny. Very funny. Always giving jokes. So remember the good, not the bad. And though there is pain, there will be healing. Our next selection will be coming from Adrian and Molly. Thank you. 
it's someplace that all of us must follow because death is the only thing appointed on tonight. So though you're grieving, remember that there's still that. We're still here, and even though he's gone on before us, we still have his legacy, his name to carry on. So we'll be taking the remembrance now from Ashley Nicole, granddaughter of the deceased. I would always talk to him and say, 
tadi semua boleh buat masih ini bukan masih kian di tanya ini macam cukup ni rasa gue ni mau shoot dia In this life, I have learned a lot that is not the background you have, neither where you come from, but it's where you are going. And everyone knows that. My dad was so incredible. So I was around him, and I was crying. I know he would say something for me, and sometimes I do things and he corrects me, and sometimes he corrects me, and I feel, um, I feel sometimes I'm away, but I know he's talking for me to be part of this. But to know that he's not going to be here with me to see me graduate, be, see me get my subjects, see me go into the army like I promised, which I hope God make it possible. Which I'm trying so hard right now. So it's a bit hard, yes, but we are no to do our way. We have to do what we have to do. Uh, I'm just praying that God keeps my grandmother here for me to do what I have promised. So she will see that I didn't only promise to buy the car, but I promised to size the comments. Thank you. Barry went to revival all in school. 
during his school years, he was always with his father, looking after animals. After the passing of his father, he continued immensely to look about animals just the way he was taught by his father. He would give the animals injections and clamp their reproductive system. He was like a community vet, although he did not go to school to study this. He showed the young people throughout his community that skills matter. Growing up in his community and going to many different places, a lot of women would want to settle with him, but his common sense told him otherwise. And so, he continued to look for that special and adorable female who would make his heart go fonder. <coughs> the one and only Hyacinth. He immediately fell in love and she too fell in love with him. Their union produced two sons, Kevin and Garnet. He loved his children and he loved his woman, Hyacinth. He loved music and loved to dance, especially with his favorite other girl, Mary Parkinson, his mother. He would often pull up the two for many, many times. She is royal because she, he knows that she is indeed royal. Barry was very happy as a living person. He hardly made anything bothers him. He made friends with each and everyone in the community. If you can't stand a hole in him, too bad for you. Sometimes it happens, there is going to be sadness. Sometimes the sadness is everlasting and nothing can be done, can be done to correct it. For you to be happy again, and this is the moment. <coughs> and so, October 22, 2023, approximately about 7 p.m., a sad news came back to the world. No one wants to be No one can ever recover from this. Unfortunately, he met in an accident coming from the Salaman. It was a disheartening news. No one can ever imagine this happening to Bob. As he always rode his back to and fro, inside and outside of the community. He died leaving mother, Mary Parkinson. Sons, Garnet and Kevin. His beloved Hyacinth, brothers Ernest, Campy, Leonard, Delroy, Preston, and Hippie. His sisters, Verly, Grace, Sunny, and Anne. We love you, Barry. We can't stop thinking about you. Walk with us. May your soul rest in peace. Wait. Thank you.
to everybody in the community here. So again, on behalf of the St. Mary Roman Catholic Church, on behalf of St. Julie Billiard, the other church where I'm also pastor, so I know he moves between the communities, but we just want to offer condolences to the family uh, that we have been praying for you all, and as well as our brother Barry, and will continue to do so at this time. If I could please have the family stand up. And we will pray for our family of the deceased at this time. we extend our hands toward the family members of our brother. Father of mercies and God of all consolation, you pursue us with an untiring love and dispel the shadow of death with the bright dawn of eternal life. Comfort the family of Michael Nickel in their loss and sorrow. Be their strength and their refuge, O Lord, and lift them from the depths of grief into the peace and light of your presence. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying has destroyed our death, and by rising has restored our life. Enable all of us, therefore, to continue to press on toward Him, so that after our earthly course is run, He may reunite us with Michael and with all of our loved ones. When every tear will be wiped away, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. So the first part of our program has been sharing stories, remembering who our brother Barry is. Uh, and now we pivot and we focus on that man on the cross, Jesus Christ, whose life and death gives us the hope and the courage and the faith to be here today. So we will uh, begin our rite of Christian burial at the front doors of the church. If any family member would like to help spread the palm, that's the white cloth that goes above the casket, I would invite you to meet me at the front doors of the church. Uh, and then we'll also, when we process up, I know some of the family members will be meeting to put on the Christian symbols as well. Again, we will begin our rite of Christian burial at the front doors of the church in a few moments. And for all the family and friends of Barry, please know we will continue to pray for you. Thank you.
Sim.
members forward who would like to place the Christian symbols. In life, Michael Nickel cherished the gospel. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, bless of my Father. In baptism, Michael received the sign of the cross. May he share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Now we come to the ceremony of our Paschal candle. The candle that was lit at the Easter vigil. This moment as Christ's body laid in the tomb. This moment of death throughout the world. But also that reminder that with death comes the opportunity for eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I invite you to please follow along as we remember that the light of God's love finds us even in the darkness of the tomb. Behold the light of Christ. As long as the day lasts, I must carry out the work of the one who sent me. The night will soon be here when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet he lives. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, we believe that Jesus is the Almighty One. Our life is hidden now with Christ our God. When Christ our light appears, then we shall appear with Him in glory. He who raised up the Lord Jesus will raise up Michael and us along with Jesus and place us in His presence. Both in life and in Together we say, we know that Christ once raised from the dead, the dead has no power over you. We also know that our own faith is over you. We also know that our own faith is beginning of our own salvation in the victory of Christ. We believe that God is able to be sovereign and give us life on the last day. Just to go over that first line again to make sure we have it right. We know that Christ, once raised from the dead, will never die again. It's an important word there. Very important word. Let us... You raised your son, Jesus Christ, from the dead, so that we who believe in him to be the light of the world may with him be brought to the fullness of life and resurrection. Grant, we ask you that our brother Michael, who left this world, might merit your forgiveness for the sins he has committed and inherit eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would now like to invite Miss Abigail McKenzie for the first reading.
has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us for Christ. While we were still helpless, died at the appointed time of the part of ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a person. Though perhaps for a good person, one might even find the courage to die. But God proves his love for us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are not justified by his blood, we still be saved through him from the wrath indeed, if I, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God though the death of his son has much more. Once reconciled, Will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast the God through our Lord Jesus Christ, though whom we have now received with reconciliation, the Lord of the Lord. That's an important thing for us to remember on a funeral day. 
hope does not disappoint. That Jesus Christ is the anchor of our souls. That he is the anchor who leads us into this promised land. This hope in Christ allows us to gather here today. One of the things that we see, particularly in our first reading from the book of the prophet Daniel, and in the gospel, we can see the ways in which these are connected and related. We hear Daniel, thousands of years before Jesus walked the earth, having this vision that at the end of time, those will come out of the dust, and they will be raised up, and that some will receive the glory, and others will have pain and suffering and moaning for all eternity. That Daniel is going right at, particularly the Sadducees who come up at Jesus' time, and he's saying that there is resurrection after death. Keep in mind, this is long before Second Temple Judaism of Jesus walking on the earth. That Daniel, this prophet, is having a vision of resurrection and judgment. That even when everything seems lost to us here on earth, that's not the case with God. And just as Daniel says that there will be resurrection on the last day, so too Jesus is saying the same thing. That everyone, the Father who has given me, I will never lose. That if the Father has put them into my hand, I will raise them up. You can see the connection between Daniel and our gospel today. That Jesus is saying, I am the fulfillment of what we heard in the prophet Daniel. That yes, God spoke those words to the prophet thousands of years ago. But don't think that's just an empty promise. Don't think that's some IOU that will come in the distant future. I am he today, Jesus is saying, I am He, and that all who come the Father puts into my hands, I will raise up, and I will not lose. Now, when we announced of our brother's funeral at both Orange Hill and Revival, I announced that Michael Nichols' funeral will be happening on this day, and everybody said, who's that? I said, Michael, you know, Michael. And they said, don't know Michael. Very good. And then I said to Miss Sandy's brother, I said, oh, Barry, Barry, yes, okay, so Barry's funeral. But I think this is a good example for us. God puts people in our lives. We don't always know everything about them. We don't always remember to carry people all the time. That God can put somebody in our life and we can lose them. But Jesus will not lose our brother Barry, if you know him by that. Jesus will not lose our brother Michael, if you know him by that. That no matter what name he went by, if it's the will of the Father, Jesus will not lose him. A great promise that we have here today. Not to get caught up on the things of this world. Not to get caught up on who calls me this, who calls me that. Did somebody cut me with their eyes? Did somebody not say hi? Did somebody tell lies? To get into all of the foolishness that distracts us in our life. But to stay focused on the reality that Jesus Christ has come here in order that you and I will not be lost to the Father. And to live our lives already in the hands of Jesus Christ. To live our lives already doing the will of the Father. Not to spend time or waste time fighting or fussing or causing drama or being miserable, but to know that that hope that does not disappoint has come for you and for me. To live our lives with hopefulness. Again, that does not mean that we're not going to know pain or suffering. That 
does not mean that we're always going to get whatever I want. But it does mean that Jesus Christ is with us every step of our life. It does mean that when you and I are too walk, too weak to walk, that when you and I are too tired to press along, that Jesus Christ continues to be with us, to encourage us, and when needed in our life, to carry us. And this hope does not disappoint. It's one of the sad realities of what we put our hope in today. Instagram, TikTok, WhatsApp statuses. We put our hope in money and cars. We put our hope in other people. And whether you put your money and put your hope in money or other people, the truth is you're never going to know when they'll run out on you. That the truth is you can put your hope into a car in a house and it's not going to be there for you at the end. You can have a huge house and a brand new car. Doesn't matter. Because all of us are going to be leaving in a box. Not a house, not a car, not an airplane or a helicopter or whatever else. We put our hope in what can never satisfy. We spend our lives arguing and fighting with each other over things that are going to turn to dust. Can you imagine that? We spend our lives being miserable towards other people simply to say, this makes me feel better about myself. And I just want to say, because this day is coming for all of us, put your hope into that which will not disappoint. Who is Jesus Christ? Put your hope into that which will not disappoint. Who is Jesus Christ? Don't think anything else will do you any good. It's here one day and it's gone the next. And you're not going to have it. Again, whether it's money or people, you don't know who both of them are going to run out on you. When it's houses and possessions, the truth is what you possess actually possesses you. And think of it this way. When you leave your yard, do you leave your doors open? Of course not. When you get into your house, what do you do? Lock up and die. Particularly these nights. That what you possess possesses you. And the thrust of our readings today Everything the Father has given to Jesus, we do not do. Stay focused on that which does not disappoint. Who is Jesus? Don't spend your time on anything else. All of us only have so many breaths, so many heartbeats. Why waste them on that which will disappear? All of us are here for only so many days, months, and years. So why waste it on something else that's going to disappear? Hold on to that which is eternal, which is the love of God. And that Jesus, who is the anchor of our soul, the hope that does not disappoint. The fulfillment of thousands of years of prophecy. And when our day comes, we know we're already in His hands. That the Father has already called us by name. That we have lived our days here, no matter how long or short they are, with meaning and purpose in order to make sure we bring Jesus Christ to others today.
the sisters and brothers, all of us fall into the trap of finding things that are only going to let us down. All of us fall into that trap. But today of all days, let Jesus free you from that trap. You can't free yourself. A prisoner cannot release themselves. But let Jesus break those chains for you. Let him ex let experience once again the power of the freedom of Jesus Christ. And you will find your life will never be disappointed. No matter whether your life is perfect in every way you could possibly imagine. No matter if you think you've lost everything that matters. If you have the whole world but you don't have Jesus, you have nothing.
please stand as we come to our final benediction. At this time, because we're normally waiting at the end, I'd like to invite the pallbearers and the hearse to please get ready to receive the body. So pallbearers, please come forward. Funeral home folks, if we can get the hearse ready, so that way we're not waiting at the end of our service. So pallbearers, please come forward. And the, sure, and the funeral service, please get the vehicle ready. You can follow along in your program. Our brother Michael has gone to rest in the, I'm sorry, trusting in God. We have prayed together for Michael. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness and parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we will see Michael again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console ourselves and one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. I invite you all to bow your heads and pray silently.
we commend our brother Michael in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Michael in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest.
Thank you.